Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Noah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we'll just wait a minute or two for some, some more participants to come in. No worries. I'm writing out my answer. I'm pre-writing out my answer. Oh, oh <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. It's okay. I won't, I'll try hard not to make it look scripted. Or if it does, you can say, hey. You just do what you do and I'll do what I do. And It'll be at fun. the end of the day, we'll see whether you're good enough to get into University of Western <laughs> Australia. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> uh, I'll just wait one, one more minute. We're up to nine attendees, high attendees. <clears throat> okay well we we might kick off it looks like we're we're at nine attendees for a while um so uh welcome everyone to this webinar i know that you've been in in webinars all day so we'll try and make this one a little bit shorter and a little bit more interactive uh, and open up for questions for the last 15 minutes or so uh, just to give you a quick idea of who i am my name's uh, dr scott mccomb i'm the sub dean international at university of western australia uh, and in that role, I look at uh, who we're trying to in, who, who we're trying to interview, who we're trying to attract into our program. And uh, I do a, a lot of interviews in in the background. So uh, yesterday, I did about fifteen interviews. Uh, any given year, I'll do up to three hundred interviews for students to come into our, our program, either medicine or dentistry, at University of Western Australia. Um, University of Western Australia, this is the only promotion I'm going to do. Uh, we're a top 100 uh, global university, so we're, we're highly renowned. We're one of the group of eight in Australia. Uh, and for, for your information, and I was, I was at, a at a different, different university about, about a year ago, and I was looking around at which universities I think were really heading in the right direction within the Australian landscape. And University of Western Australia was a pretty clear dis decision for me. The, the reason that that is, is I think it's got, um, of the group of eight universities, it's got a young and really focused uh, group of academics who are running the medical program and the dental program. And they have a real focus on clinical medicine and doctor-patient interactions. And I think that's probably the most important thing for our medical practitioners moving forward. Uh, myself, I'm an infectious diseases researcher uh, specialising in HIV, um, but it's also a very interesting time to be in Perth, uh, Western Australia, because we don't actually have a COVID epidemic here at the moment. Um, since the start of COVID two years ago, there's only been nine total deaths in all of Western Australia. So it's, it's pretty unbelievable the amount of management that's happening here. Uh, and I'm going to try and uh, in integrate some of that into some future research, research directions. But that's a talk for another day. Uh, this conversation here is about you. Um, I've introduced myself. I would also like to introduce to you Noah, who you can see in the upper left hand corner there. Um, Noah is currently one of our um, medical students in year two. So he was sitting in your seat a couple of years ago, but Noah, maybe just briefly introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Noah. I actually started um, in January 2021, um, but unfortunately due to COVID had to pause. Sorry, I'm just going to quickly close the door. I apologize. This sort of stuff happens in online interviews go. all the time too. So. There you go. Sorry. Um, I guess I can say my undergrad was in psychology and I did a master's in neuroscience uh, just uh, prior to working uh, in uh, some neurophysiology for a couple of years. And then I came to UWA doing medicine and it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been it's the amount of support and whatnot I've had has been fantastic. There you go. So thanks very much, uh, Noah. And hopefully for, for you guys who are thinking about um, applying, our next uh, batch of interviews will be in May 2022 for 2023 commencement. And there's a very good chance you'll be coming across uh, myself at those interviews. So I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you then. Okay, just quickly, let's go into uh, the MMI and Insider's Guide to MMIs and, and why we do what we do. Uh, so first of all, um, why we interview. Um, I, I'm not not going to be probably like a lot of other academics here. I, I believe the interview is the most important part of your application. It's great that you've got GPAs or really high high school scores. It is absolutely fantastic that you've done fantastically in the GAMSAT or the MCAT. But really that doesn't tell us much about you as an individual. And what we're looking for is what you're going to be like 
five years, six years, seven years, 10 years from now, whether you're going to be a doctor who's you know, engaged in clinical medicine or someone who's trying to solve the world's big problems. And it doesn't really matter where you do that, whether you do that here with us in Perth in Western Australia, or whether you go back to Canada or wherever you, you may wish to practice your medicine. So the, the interview for us is considered the most important part. And I'm actually trying to get the percent. So we weight the interview at the moment as 33% of your overall score. We're actually talking about increasing that up to 50% because we actually value the interview so much here at UWA. A couple of things that we're looking for, we're obviously looking at your pathway up until now. So what have you done? What sets you apart from the other applicants that we get? Um, in terms of applications for UWA, we get in the vicinity of 500 applications for our 30 positions. So there's a lot of applications and, and we're quite a small intake compared to other schools. So we're, we're going to spend a lot more time trying to figure out who you are and how you'll fit into our program. And let, and let us know also how you're going to practice for the next 40, 50 years of your career after you graduate from us here. So what we're looking for is we're looking for people who are going to be the future clinical leaders. Um, I'm, I'm getting older now. My time of leadership is starting to come to an end. So I'm looking at Noah now and thinking, you know, it's only five years until he'll be in a leader, leadership position. Uh, and, and that's really what we're looking for, how you're going to be in that position. But also knowing as a good leader that you have to be self-aware. You have to know what your leadership strengths are. You have to know what your personality is and you have to be a ref reflective individual as well. Uh, like I mentioned really early, UWA is all about the doctor-patient excellence. It's the most important part of medicine. We can understand all the biomedical backgrounds and we will teach you all the biomedical backgrounds, but it's really how you interact with the patients and deliver them the care that they need. Uh, so at UWA, uh, we only have one year in the preclinical space and then years two, three and four, if you're coming into the graduate program, are uh, all in the clinical environment. So you have as many opportunities as possible to develop that excellence. And we're also looking for big picture thinkers. Um, the, the world's problems, as you've probably noticed over the last couple of years, will, will change and will continue to get bigger and bigger. And it's over to, to your cohorts and, and your team to start um, handling some of those problems and start solving some of those big problems. I think the last reason, particularly for our Canadian applicants and Austrek applicants is, is because we're, we're looking at how you're going to come out and how you're going to go at an internship interview, at a residency interview, as a, at a specialist surgical interview. Um, and also how you're, if you're thinking of transitioning back to Canada, how you're going to go with the MCCQE part two, which is all about an observed oral clinical examination. So we're looking at you already coming in with some of the skills to do well there, and then from there, we're going to add the layers on top, the, the expertise on top, so that you'll really start dominating those things. And, and that's what we're looking for. We're, we're, obviously, some people will be absolutely fine with um, family practice in Canada, and that's okay, but you still have to pass that MCCQE part two. And we're going to make sure um, before we even get you into our program that you've got the skills and capabilities to do that. So about interviews, uh, the, the most common form of interview and the one you'll probably hear the most about is the multi-mini interview. That's usually somewhere between five and eight stations, um, and you usually have one interviewer on each of the stations. <clears throat> the interviews I'm doing at the moment are for our domestic medical students, and that is a multi-mini interview. So a student walks into my office, uh, they will have an interview with me where I'll talk about one specific topic with them, and mainly the student will talk about uh, what, that one specific topic for about eight minutes, a bell will ring, and then they'll go to the next room. For, for you as international applicants, we sometimes do that in the, uh, as the, med the combined medical schools of Australia will sometimes do that sort of methodology. So we might have different um, Zoom rooms that will pop you in and out of to do that, but it's a little bit clunky. So what, we're, we're, what most universities are now doing is an MMI style, where commonly you'll run through those five MMI focused questions, but you'll do it with one or two interviewers on the opposite end of a Zoom call or in uh, a meeting room in Toronto or Vancouver or Calgary or wherever it may be. Um, I'm hoping to actually be able to get there in person for the May interview. So you'll probably be doing it with myself and somebody else uh, in, a, in a hotel somewhere or a, a meeting room somewhere. And then the, so MMI style is the most common on what we do at UWA. Uh, and then you can also do a panel interview, which is a little bit more like a traditional interview you'll have for, for, a, for a job um, down the track. So there'll be two to four people sitting across a table and they'll all be peppering you with questions. And they're generally more of a generic question, whereas multi mini interview style tends to be a very focused question that we're marking you on. The multi-mini interview also reduces the amount of subjectivity. So we're scoring you on your response rather than you as an individual. 
So even though I'm looking at Noah right now, who's one of our MD2 students, and he's about to practice a question, I'm, I'm hearing the noise in the background. I'm looking at his messy bed. I'm, like, I'm thinking, well, maybe you could have worn a suit today to the interview. None of that comes into the scoring. Um, so the scoring is really about what comes out of your mouth and what you're putting on the table. So with that in mind, I thought we might quickly go through a practice MMI question. Um, now, Noah has, has seen this question, but he, he assures me that he hasn't practiced it in any way. <laughs> Uh, and, and this is similar to the questions that, that we'll be asking. Um, obviously, at UWA, we're looking for things that are clinical excellence. We're looking for lifelong learning, self-reflection. But there'll also be questions in there about what drives you towards this position. So I'm not sure how this will go, but we have a question coming up right now. So... I'm ready. Noah, welcome to the UWA interview process. Uh, my name's Scott. Can you please discuss with me one of your transferable skills? Um, and how, how that could use improvement, how you would go about improving it and the resources that you would use. Uh, well, first, let me say hi, Scott. I appreciate your time and, and uh, the uh, opportunity to interview with you. Um, in regards to a transferable skill, uh, you know, I, I used to have, when I was in high school, quite a bit of trouble with public speaking. And so, uh, you know, over the course of university, I took the I took the opportunity to to join the debate club, for example, so that I could work on those kinds of skills. Um, you know, since then, uh, in my capacity during my master's degree, I've had to do a couple of presentations, both to the lay public, uh, as well as to um, a number of you know, um, uh, high-profile professors that were sort of you know judging my my work. Uh, and, uh, and since then, in the, in the clinical work that I've done, uh, I've had to present on different methods of neurophysiology. And so all of those put together, I think, have, over time, uh, really bolstered that skill. And I would continue to develop that, um, that skill over, over the course of medical school, um, I, ideally also through clubs. But I think uh, I'd really in be interested in education. And so being able to teach would be really nice. What was it about the, the public speaking that you found most difficult? Um, you know, you know, there, there's a personal element there. Uh, I would say that there's a, a fear of jumbling up in front of people who you look up to. Uh, I'd say, um, you know, uh, even a fear of judgment, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but ultimately, you know, those things are uh, things you can work on and things that over time you can build confidence from uh, and, and use that actually as a, as a platform for growth. Yep. Okay. And uh, looking forward from here, you're going to be hopefully a, a, a medical practitioner one day. How do you think you're going to have to develop that skill more moving forward? Uh, well, that's a great question. I think part of that's going to be um, figuring out how to transfer what I've learned to people who maybe don't have the same um, uh, <laughs> uh, same lexicon uh, as I might after school. Uh, so I would say, you know, really understanding how to cater the information that I'm delivering. Uh, maybe that's, that's, that's a big part of it, I think. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's 30 seconds left. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this station? Um, I actually am just curious about the lifestyle uh, at uh, the University of Western Australia, how, you know, and the, and the balance between work uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm not from Perth. So, and, and so, you know, and discovery, I guess I would say. Okay. Um, I, and then I could answer that question, obviously, but that's about the, t the five, the five minutes of an MMI question. So you need to be quite quick and quite focused with it. Um, so I'll just quickly go to the, the next slide right now. Um, Perth is really good to live in. Um, it's one of the reasons that I chose U UWA to come to. Uh, we're, we're 15 minutes from the beach, 10 minutes from the beach. Uh, we're basically half of the Australian continent. So there's amazing outdoor uh, facilities. And it's a really multicultural and, and integrated community. Um, highly livable, huge amount of sunshine. It's actually probably a little bit too hot for my liking. Uh, I tend to like more a cooler weather. Um, but there are also a, a whole heap of Canadians here as well. Um, well you're about like to go into summer. We're about, we're about to go into summer. Uh, like I mentioned, um, it's also a good time to, to be chatting to this Austrek Forum because um, 
we, we've previously haven't taken in a huge number of Canadians and we're looking to probably double that in, in the next coming years. So it's a good time to be thinking about University of Western Australia and, and coming and practicing medicine down here. Um, so I might stop screen sharing now uh, and we'll open it up to some questions. So uh, let me see if I can do that. Have I stopped screen sharing? Uh, yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. I've got um, too many screens here if you see me looking around quite a bit. So that's how an interview uh, went. Um, I'd, I'd love to know your opinions on how you think, think Noah went. Um, from, from my perspective, he really didn't touch too much on the resources component of that question. It was clear that he had thought about what his, uh, what his op options are. And I've got one of my colleagues here who's texted me a seven out of 10. Um, we don't score out of 10 at uh, UWA. We, we do a, a checkbox sort of mechanism. Okay, um, but it, it, it would have been in that vicinity, <laughs> roughly a, a seven out of 10 if we were looking at a score. I would have liked to really seen him unpack what tools he'd used a bit more and, and thought about how he's going to continue to improve this thing. So you've mentioned that public speaking is your issue. It's great that you've already done some things about it. But what are you going to do to turn that, that, that weakness or perceived weakness into a strength moving forward? Um, if time allowed, I'd say I would never, ever answer a question about living in Perth during the interview. I'd say that's a great question. Happy to chat about it at the end of the interview. But I would go to the next station because I want to get Noah's opinion, not my opinion. Um, so, that, so that was really quite good. Um, if time allowed and if he had absolutely nailed that all the components that we were looking for, I would have maybe flipped it around on him and said, okay, so that's one of the areas you're working on. What's one of the areas that you're really proud of? Um, so seven out of 10, six ticks out of eight, whatever it would have been on, on anyone's scoring mechanism. I won't, I won't let you know um, all, all the ins and outs. Obviously um, Noah has done absolutely fine an interview before because he's with us here in, in the medical degree. And I'm sure he would have done some preparation. Um, on preparation, I've done about 1500 interviews. I can detect someone who is over-prepared and has done all the MMI training within the first 30 seconds of an interview. And it usually starts with, well, there's three things about this scenario that um, I find com com confusing or complicated. The first issue is the second issue is the third issue is I'm like, oh my goodness, this person has just done so much training that they're not thinking about the actual question and what we're looking for. So come to it obviously with some training behind you, but don't rote memorize responses because it actually works against you in the long run. We're looking for the real you, the, the off the cuff you, um, the obviously prepared you, but not, not the rote memorizer. I've uh, got a question down here from Kashef. How should someone tackle scenarios where there are two extreme situations and it's hard to find a middle answer? And will there ever be a right or wrong answer to a question? Um, Second component of that question first, Hashaf, um, we generally write these questions that there is not a right answer. Um, so with that question you just saw from Noah, he could have chosen a whole, whole number of things and they're not necessarily gonna be right or wrong because it's about him as an individual and it will be about you as an individual. So generally there won't be a, 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 wrong, a right or a wrong answer for the interviews that I conduct at UWA. Um, and a lot of the other medical programs within Australia, some of them do still have things that are specifically looking for um, a, an answer, but most have gone away from that because that's not really teaching us about you as an individual. It's teaching more about whether you know something or not, which is not as, not as relevant. Um, if I may, I'm no, sure, no I'd say that probably the most important thing for me was just knowing key points in my life that I could draw on. So it wasn't like I was memorizing anything in particular. These were me and points of me that really came, came, came honestly. Um, but I made sure that they were sort of quick to the touch so that I, I knew I could draw on them at any point with any scenario that was relevant. That's, that's really uh, that. And if you can get your hands on some questions, you know, to practice speaking out loud, some people aren't comfortable speaking, especially to a, a camera, making sure, you know, like you're not like this, but it's like actually on you and, not my bed, et cetera. Even though that, that technically doesn't matter, I found it helpful for me to be in that sort of like headspace. Yeah. Uh, and the first part of that question where, where the scenario has two extreme examples, um, I, I, it depends a little bit on the question. Obviously just ignoring the second extreme um, part of that situation is not recommended because in our marking rubric, we'll have a part of it that you've got to have touched on extreme situation one and extreme situation two. 
Um, so obviously touch on it, but go to the one that feels right for you and discuss that at long length. Uh, thank you, I've got everyone thinking about all the past knowledge I should have when going to interviews. Like what if I'm asked a question about a current or past event I'm not well knowledgeable about? Is it okay to say during an interview what I don't know how to answer something? Um, first, first and foremost, we'll, we won't ask things that you don't know much about. Um, it, it will be more things about yourself as an individual. Uh, if we are asking a particularly hard question, which is something you don't know much about, then it's absolutely fine to say, I don't, look, I don't know much about this scenario, but, what, but then we're looking at how you unpack it. Are you thinking about it from all different perspectives and all different angles? Um, rather than just a, a narrow focus, because we're going to be teaching you to go into a clinical environment where you're not going to know everything. So it's about how you problem solve on your feet. It's about how you see other people's perspectives as well. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, anything you'd like to add to that one, Noah? Um, I think you you covered it. I would just basically, as you said, it's it's the key is unpacking, right? So if you walk into a, a scenario and you have no idea, it, there, it, that's okay, right? The idea is really about being like, okay, I have no idea, but if I break this down into you know a few a few different components, I can look at it from this way, this way, and this way. And as long as you verbalize that kind of thing, you'll do great, really. Um, the, the other thing that I'll just quickly mention there um, ab about the, the discussionary nature of the interviews, some universities do it very different. Um, so uh, with the, more, the ones that are more strict MMI, they won't engage with you in the conversational sort of manner like I did with Noah during that interview. It will just be, um, there, there'll be lots of silence. So they will wait for you to continue talking to fill up your five minutes. Or there might be the only thing, like if Noah asks me a question, they'll say, um, I cannot comment on that, but I can rephrase the question. The question is, question is da, 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 da. So it's, it's a very dry mechanical um, sort of interview process. You just need to be aware of that as well because different people interview different ways. Um, I guess the other thing about interviews, having um, done plenty of interviews from this side of the screen, but also a number of interviews from the other side of the screen, it's also about you getting a feel for what that university is like. Um, do you want to go to a university that is, you know, strict and by the rules and, and, and all that sort of stuff? Or do you want to go to a university that has academics that are a little bit more engaging or, you know, what is it that you're looking for? So yes, there is a power differential between the person who's doing the interview and the person who's being interviewed, but don't forget that this is a really important aspect for you to make your decisions as well. Um, you'll get a feeling from workplaces down the track of whether that's a place you think you'll fit in well to or not based off the interview. It's exactly the same for your medical school program. Uh, any more questions or comments from anybody? Do MMI questions ask for what your motivation is for medicine? Um, good question. It, it will depend on the university. Um, it has always been in uh, the, the last five years of interviews that I've seen at, at, at UWA have, have incorporated something about your motivation or what drives you towards do medicine. So you, you want to have your story for that pretty well developed. Um, again, we're, remember from the earlier slides, we're looking at you on a lifelong trajectory towards medicine. So if you've only thought about it in the month leading up to doing an interview, then, then we're gonna pick that up and it's not going to do so well for you when we're asking about what your motivations are. But if you've said that you've got years of, you know, volunteering experience, you've actually worked in a hospital or whatever it is to start thinking about what it's, what it's like to be a doctor, um, then that holds you in really good stead. Um, most of the universities will have some area in there that where they're trying to find out a little bit about your motivations to do what you do. Some universities don't do an interview though, so it's hard for them to do that. Um, I, I'm thinking you've probably been to the, the Deakin Medicine one earlier today. They don't have, um, from memory, unless it's changed since I left there, that they don't have a specific motivation station, but there will be a bit of a general get to know you at the start of the interview where they start sort of trying to understand some of your motivations. Um, so every university does it a little bit differently. I, I would prepare for why do you want to do medicine style questions? What motivates you towards medicine? Where do you want to be um, 20 years after now? Thanks I, so much, it's extremely just, uh, helpful. No problems at all. Sorry, Noah? I just wanted to add one thing. I, I, I didn't know I wanted to be a physician 
you know, right out of high school or anything like that. So it, even if you, if, even if you didn't, you know, and you kept up with like exactly like a certain kind of volunteer work, things that really are meaningful to you, that'll, that'll come through as well. I guess the flip side of that is, is I thought I wanted to be a physician and then I started working in a hospital as a theatre technician, theatre orderly, and, and figured out that actually I don't want to be a physician. What, what really interests me is research and solving problems. So that's why I went down an academic pathway instead. But it, it's, good, it's good to have that interaction. So if you, if you are still tossing up of whether to do medicine, go and jump into something that actually gives you that experience to figure out whether you do want to do it for the next 50 years of your life. Uh, Thank you again, no problems at all. Uh, any other questions or comments or should we head back to Sarah? Yeah, we're almost at time. We probably have time for one question if one does pop in, but um, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much um, to Dr. Scott McComb and uh, current student Noah. A lot of insight into the MMIs and UWA and I, from someone who hasn't done an MMI interview, I can tell you just from that question, made me stress a little bit when you were about to answer it, Noah. <laughs> so um, well done to you. Um, and yeah, well done on also organizing the background interruptions, Noah. That was, that was going above and beyond. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely, yeah, definitely organized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Like I said, as soon as you asked that question, I could feel my heart start to beat a little bit faster and I wasn't even on video or having to answer anything. So <laughs> have, have the practices, figure out, you know, practice it in the shower, practice it with mom and dad, practice it with a buddy and yeah, you'll be fine. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you have any more questions, make sure uh, to head back to Career Echo. We do have a half an hour left of the virtual fair. So um, thank you again so much. All right. Lovely to meet you all. And hopefully I'll see some of you in May. <laughs> Take care. Bye, everyone. <laughs>